Hi again. Um, right, today I'm going to be talking about how the film El Labyrinth del Fauno uh, serves as a critique of the Franco regime. Uh, right, as I've kind of talked about in uh, a couple of other talks I've done already, um, the film is set in 1944. This was uh, five years into the Franco dictatorship in Spain, uh, following the end of the Spanish Civil War in 1939. It's a time when Franco had largely established control over the entire country, although there were kind of uh, outbursts of uh, rebellion, resistance, that were often from the maquis, the kind of uh, resistance fighters, that we see through the, um, the band of Pedro and his fellow, uh, fellow rebels in the forest. Um, it's very obvious that uh, Del Toro is coming from an angle that is critical of this regime. But this wasn't something that often has been shown in Spanish language film, really. Um, after Franco's death um, in, in the mid-1970s, um, until really the 2000s, to be honest, there was a kind of... Um, a so-called Pacto del Olvido, or Ley del Olvido, a law of forgetfulness, or Pact of Forgetfulness, about what went on during the, the, the years of Franco. This was really because the Spanish Civil War had such a kind of powerful impact upon Spanish society that many politicians thought that if uh, the old wounds were opened, if discussions were brought up again, then it could well rip apart the very kind of fabric of Spanish society. The Spanish Civil War was something that really did deal, it really did impact on families. There would be families who'd be supposed to the left or supposed to the right. Uh, many people had grievances, whether it was about um, mass graves, whether it was about um, assassinations or murders, um, and it, this, this happened from both sides that it was, it was thought better not to really deal with the war at all. And for a long time, the Spanish Civil War was almost like a, the kind of elephant in the room, the thing you didn't really want to talk about. Very much similar to uh, the Dirty War in Argentina. Again, that was something that was forgotten about for a long time, and many of the uh, politicians and the, the military involved in that got really got away with it, uh, despite the atrocities committed in that time. So it's really only been in the last... I'd say 12, 15 years where, where Spanish culture has begun to deal with the Spanish Civil War, the dictatorship, and deal with it from uh, a critical point of view. Uh, this coincided with uh, the law, the La Ley de Memoria Historica in Spain, which, uh, which finally kind of um, allowed the, the, the old statues of Franco, the named areas, the named roads of Franco leaders to be, to be taken down and removed. And films like, like um, Pan's Labyrinth do do uh, you know, start to criticise uh, the, the, the leadership of Franco in, in pretty stringent terms. Uh, in this particular film, um, really, it's all through the characterisation of Vidal that we see the majority of the criticism of the, of the regime. Um, there is a kind of central, central metaphor of the film of being a, 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 a criticism of Spanish society. But here I'm, I'm going to deal really with how the regime is specifically portrayed within the film before going on in a second video to deal with what other characters and the, the fancy world deal with. So as I was saying, Vidal is very much representative of, uh, of uh, the Franco regime. He, in character and in action, he, you can see him being portrayed as Del Toro arguably sees the, sees the regime, I would say. Uh, Vidal is a very rigid, very authoritarian um, character. Uh, he doesn't brook any argument at all. Uh, we can see this throughout the film. Uh, one, just one example is, for example, when um, he's torturing the, the stutterer um, and he gives him the chance of escaping if he can count to three and he asks his lieutenant, he said, look, if, if I say anyone can go, will anyone contradict me? No, sir, he can go, is what a man says. He has this kind of... This kind of um, you know, unwavering control over everything, very much like was the case with Franco. Um, so that's one kind of aspect of, of his character. So he expects obedience at all times, much like was it demanded by Franco. Um, again, we see this in many occasions. Probably the best example of this is, is after Dr. Ferreiro has, has, um, has injected the stutterer to kill him and, and uh, put an end to his suffering. And... Um, the, the captain says, why didn't you obey me? And uh, the doctor says, look, you know, obeying you unquestionably, that's only something that you can do. Um, a very kind of forceful message in that, in that instinct. Um, 
every command he gives, he expects it to be carried out straight away, and there's very little opposition from any of his soldiers. They may look at times a bit fed up with what he's doing, or a little bit, uh, maybe a bit worried ethically about what he's doing, but they they follow his lead anyway. Again, examples of this are after the two the two hunters uh, are one's bottled, one shot um, early on. Um, again, another time is where they're going around shooting all the rebels after the battle on the on the hill in the forest just before the stutter is discovered to be alive. Uh, so this is this really shows the the authoritarian nature, the unquestioning obedience that, that the Vidal and therefore Franco kind of expected during the regime. Um, we obviously have the the violence involved. Again, it's impossible not to associate this with with the, uh, the, the, the facts of history, the fact that many uh, socialists, communists, anarchists, many, many opposition uh, people towards Franco were, were kind of executed or put into uh, prison camps. Again, we see just how brutally Vidal treats any opposition that he has. Um, he doesn't expect any excuses, doesn't allow people to speak, almost makes a judgment very sweepingly unfairly. Again, we have the example of the two peasants. Just because they may have some pamphlets in their bag which could be construed as being socialists in ideology or, or communists and therefore anti-Franco, um, he doesn't search them properly and kills them, kills them first and then finds the rabbits that they said they were hunting. Um, we see how he, the brutality of his treatment of the stutterer, the fact that he's prepared to torture Mercedes as well. These are things that are just somehow... Uh, part and parcel of what he is. Um, his his desire to eradicate any form of opposition is is brutally clear at the banquet as well. Um, you know when he talks about the fact that he wants his child to be born in a pure, a clean Spain. Um, again, very much uh, the ideas of Franco he wanted to get rid of any people who were anti the Spanish ideal, whether it be separatists from the Basque country or separatists from Catalonia or just people of a political ideology. He's very clear in, in his support for this regime and what he expects it to achieve and promoting this legacy um, of, uh, of, you know, Vidalism or Francoism in, in the case of the real, the, in the metaphor. Um, so that's another very clear example of, of, the, of his rigidity, uh, the violence um, and the kind of unwavering nature of his of his ideology um, other other kind of interpretations of uh, other kind of criticisms of the um, of the of the Franco regime are, are fairly obvious um, one another example is the fact that everything seems really miserable um, in terms of the real world particularly whenever whenever Vidal is around the colours that, that Del Toro employs are, are very dark. There's a lot of grey, a lot of blue. Um, it does imply, it does give a very, a, a very kind of sombre, very dark, very miserable tone to proceedings, and it's it's impossible not to be affected by that. It's quite often raining as well. It's almost like he brings the worst to Spain. There's very little colour, very little life, uh, very little happiness that that um, that. Um, uh, that Del, Por Del Toro allows to be shown in relation to Vidal. Um, we see the kind of authoritarian nature um, as well uh, during the, the banquet, something I hadn't really, uh, that I should have arguably mentioned before that. Uh, one of the main things about the banquet is, how, is who's actually there as well, the fact that the church is there. Uh, there they see eating huge amounts of lovely food, and then the very next day we see the rations queue and they're just giving out some bread. Just showing the kind of inherent unfairness of the regime. Um, again, it's critical of the church in this aspect as well. Uh, they're seen as being supportive of this. Uh, but it's almost, we, we have a very cynical um, view of where the soldier is shouting, here is the bread of every day under Franco, the reds lie, every day people get food and firewood. Well, but it's not as good as what, what else has been getting. And if they're having to ration it, it's not a particularly free or fair society. So again, uh, Del Toro is very critical um, of that aspect of the film. Um, again, going back to the kind of camera work, uh, the tone of the film, um, the fact that there is such a fear 
uh, prevalent in all aspects of the characters we see under Vidal's regime. Again, gives you an idea of... It's almost like a microcosm of Spanish society. Again, we see the fear inspired in, obviously, uh, Ofelia, obviously Mercedes, uh, the Doctor as well. Um, the view of the of the other cooks within the within the the mill. Uh, again, it just it's it's almost like Vidal is saying this is a microcosm of how Franco Spain really was. Um, in the next talk uh, I'm going to do. I'm going to be talking more about the whole metaphor of of, uh, of the critique of Franco Spain. I'm going to talk about what all the characters represent in terms of of this view, and also about the links with the the fantasy world and the state of Spain under Franco, which again I think is very uh, symbolic of how things used to be. So, hope that was useful. <laughs>